Travel and Tyler style. This is a video I've wanted to do for a very long time. I'm in San Salvador, in El Salvador. This used to be the murder capital of the world just recently, not too long ago. But over the last three years, they've completely cleaned it up. They've gotten rid of most of the gang activity. And as you can see, there's a lively vibe going on out here. Perfect weather. It's, I don't feel any tension at all. I'm going to be wandering around. I'm in the plaza area now. I'm not too familiar with really what I'm going to be looking for, but I'm definitely just going to try to wander around, take it all in, spend the whole day here, try some food. It's going to be fun. Follow along with me. This is actually the Plaza Libertad. It was the first thing that I read when I said, where should I go? <laughs> this is what came up, so that's why I chose this. There's only so much to see in this little area though. So now I'm gonna continue on and let's see what's next. The reason I'm wearing a hoodie is because I have my passport hanging underneath my hoodie. It's in the like a necklace deal. That's where I keep my credit cards and my passport. So nobody can tell that I actually have it on me. It's a lot better than having it in your backpack. And you know, you never know, you might get robbed or something could go sideways. You could move a backpack behind you. You don't want to be stranded in a random country without your passport. So that's why I have my hoodie with my passport underneath it. And it's not visible. If for some reason someone did try to steal my backpack that I have on, all that's in it are power cords and chargers and that type of stuff that is very easy to replace. And then everything that's basically critical is not exposed. So that's the way I'm doing it on this trip. That's the way I always try to do it when I'm going to countries that have a little bit of a reputation for pickpocketing and that type of stuff. And it eliminates that risk. I'm with Enriquez here. Enriquez, what were you just telling me, man? I am Enrique Escobar Escobar. And if I am with him, something brought him here. And God loves him. But how safe how safe is San Salvador now? It's safe. If you are with me, nobody will touch you. It is against. Law. How long has it been safe for? For like three years? Two no. years? Like a year and a half. It, it's the president that did it, huh? The Kelly. The Kelly, okay. He made it. The Kelly, he's the man. Okay. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. It's nice to meet you, man. Hey, Thank you for I looking after you, me. Can I ask you something? Yes. Can you invite me to some water? Because can I invite you for some what? Water. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's go. The president of El Salvador, his name is Naib Bukele, and he's my age. He's like 41 years old, born in 1981. And he's a stud. He is, he's changed the whole fortunes of this whole country. He's very hard on crime. He's eliminated the gangs. All of this is within the last two or three years. You know, he's very proactive with the way he's going about certain things. And, you know, two years ago, I wouldn't be able to walk around El Salvador like I am right now. And he's brought back tourism. Like people are actually coming here now. They weren't before. And, you know, think about this. For the last 20 years or so, people that have lived here have not been able to send their children to school without being worried about their safety. Their husband leaves for work, he may not come home. There's there's so much good that has happened recently in El Salvador and needs to be recognized because it's now a safe place. I mean, you can walk around freely and you are not gonna get harmed. You have to have your head on a swivel. You have to always be careful. You know, you can't 
be oblivious. You definitely can't be nonchalant about things. You need to always be aware of your surroundings. But compared to how it used to be, I mean, I don't feel any tension. And as an American, I've had like three or four people come up to me saying, we're looking after you. We will not let you get hurt. Like, wow, okay, I appreciate it. I mean, that's a, that's a real thing. Like they are, I mean, there's a lot of eyes on me. I'm wearing a bright orange hoodie. I'm the only American floating around this area. So obviously I'm holding the camera, walking around talking. So obviously I, I am sticking out like a sore thumb essentially. But with that being said, people are coming up to me being like, you have no reasons to be concerned. We got you. And that's cool. For real, that's happening. All right. I haven't shaved in a week or so. So I stumbled into a barber shop and I've asked him to shave my face. And I think that's what's about to happen. So here we go. Yeah, that's the best shave I've ever had in my life. It was crazy. So, glad I stumbled into this place. <laughs> One of the hardest parts with traveling like I've been traveling is, you know, I don't even have extra clothes, let alone a razor. So, I've just felt nasty, you know? But he's still not here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my man. Um, See, I'm making friends. But, you know, I, I was just feeling nasty and I was just waiting for an opportunity to come across a barbershop that could do it. So I'm in El Salvador and I walk across the street and I see a barbershop. And I went in and put into Google Translate, I want a straight edge shape. I wasn't even sure if that would translate. And this person gave me one of the greatest shaves I've ever had in my life and I was in there for like 45 minutes like I don't he, he even cut like my nose hairs out and everything like took it to a very very high level then I asked at the end how much do I owe you because I, mean, I have no idea and he said two US dollars so that's what I paid for that it's quite the experience and that's why I love this travel game <laughs> for real there's this little 12 year old girl out here where the birds are selling seeds or something to feed to the birds. That's a hustle. And I respect that. Some little 12, 13, 14 year old girl walking around up to people trying to sell them food to feed to the birds because there's birds everywhere. I like that. That's what I like about experiencing things like this. Like you see like people's daily hustles, you know? And that's definitely a cool part of the experience. But yeah, that girl's gonna make something of herself someday, I promise. This is one of those side street market deals. You can buy a little bit of everything. You know, I always walk through these markets and only buy food. That's the only thing I ever buy, like right there. Corn. That's awesome. Or actually, that's a banana. Yeah, so that's banana. Plantonis or whatever they call them. But yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> I never buy like trinkets or, you know, sometimes I'll buy toothpaste. I will, like, as a matter of fact, I kind of need toothpaste right now. That guy's slanging toothpaste. I'll have to circle back on that one. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna go back and pick up some toothpaste. But like, that's the only thing I ever really buy. But what I'm saying is like, when they have little street food people, like cook it up street food in these markets, that to me is awesome. Like sometimes I will post up for hours 
eating street food in situations like this. Now this one, I wouldn't say is heavy on the food, you know, some of them are, but, oh, well, this guy's getting his shoes shine. Yeah, I could go for a shoe shining too. A shave and a shoe shining, that'd be a very productive day. I'm gonna check out the Church of Rosary. Evidently, it's not from the outside anything too impressive. It's kind of like one of those, can't judge a book by its cover sort of a moments. So we're gonna see, that's what it says. Like from the outside, it's not overly impressive, but once you go inside, it's incredible, evidently. So that's what we're gonna find out. Problem is, I don't even know what it looks like. So I just read something online about it. So we're gonna, I know the, general area it should be in. I think it should be right around here. Oh, there's a sign. Oh, there it is. Look at me. I'm getting good at this. Okay. Yeah, I can see what they mean. It looks like a warehouse almost. All right, I'm gonna see what it costs to go inside and scope this out. Okay, so it's $2 for me. So we're gonna go take a look at this. Okay, that was worth the price of admission, cost $2, but it's probably worth $10 or more because that was a pretty, that was pretty incredible. You know, it's one of their main tourist attractions here. And they're right, like the outside of it is not, it's not impressive, but when you go inside and you see the details and the, like the sculptures and how pristine it is, yeah, yeah. The, the Church of Rosary. I guess it's called is definitely something you should visit if you're here you know it's only a matter of five minutes or something it's 10 minutes at the most it's not an all-day ordeal but it's right right in the heart of the city center you know so it's easy to get to if you're already in the city center you might as well check this out just to kind of just to do it what a crazy experience this is this is like just it's nuts it's nuts, honestly. El Salvador is cool. It's, uh, you know, I would never say El Salvador is my favorite country. <laughs> you know, I would never say that. I would never say, you know, it's a must visit if you're looking to have the time of your life, because it's not. But what it is, is it's very, it's kind of an emotional situation because every person you look at understands, you understand the struggle they've been through living in this country. And now all of a sudden, their lives are opened up again. So 
you can't come into El Salvador with the mindset that you want to compare it to, you know, Costa Rica or places like that that have been developed for so long and safe for so long. You can't, you can't compare them. But if you compare it just for the value you can get from a trip like this, I mean, look, I'm walking out of this with more than I gained from my trip to Costa Rica, you know? Because you walk out of this with like an impact, it hits you, it makes you recognize that what we have in America is, you know, we take it for granted. Like these people are so nice right now, like because they're 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 free. They feel like they're actually free, and it's like this excitement that you can feel in the air. In all seriousness, meanwhile in America we just expect that. You know, in most countries just expect that. But that's why, that's what makes this experience different than any other travel experiences I probably can even think of. Because this is a new world. You know, I'm in San Salvador. <laughs> Man, this used to be so dangerous and crazy. When I was a kid, no way I would have thought I would try to come here. And now I'm here and I'm realizing that like everybody is treating me so well and so friendly and People are so happy, man. It's one of those things. If you have an opportunity, I, I would suggest you do it. I really would, just because it'll change you. If you don't get something out of this, then I don't know what to tell you. I went back to my hostel and chilled for a little bit, and now I'm heading back out. So my current mission is I need to try a local pupusa. I just have to, it's kind of part of the deal. And you would think it would be really easy to find. I, uh, up to this point, have not seen like a sign that says, best pupusas in town or something. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> something that's like a dead giveaway, like this is the place I need to go. So that's my current situation as I'm walking down these streets, literally for that reason. And once I find the right restaurant, I'll sit down and I'll try to give you an idea of how good it tastes. Typically, that's not something I would try to eat like in Las Vegas, you know, or somewhere else around the world, but here, you know, you got to. So let's we'll see how this goes. I've made it a goal of mine to have a pupusa while I'm here in El Salvador. And that is what I'm about to do right now. I ordered a loca pupusa which they said is bigger, made of local ingredients, and then a pollo pupusa. So we will see how this goes. I'm pretty excited. It's one of those things that you cannot not do this. I'm not even sure if I like pupusas, but this is how we're gonna find out. Okay, so here's how I'm doing it. I think it's right. So you get the pupusa right here. Okay, grab it with your hands. Then you got this stuff that I pulled. I pulled out of that. So I'm assuming that that's what it's for. So you grab it like that. Ooh, it's hot. So I'm gonna grab it like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's right, but either way, it's delicious. That's right. Really El Salvador is completely safe. It's 100% safe. You are not going to get robbed. You are not going to have a problem. You are not going to get shook down. It's, it's shockingly safe. But with that being said, I'd like to tell a little bit of a story from talking to some people over here and understanding a little bit of the history of El Salvador. Four years ago, it was at its worst, okay? There's two major gangs. I can't remember the names of them, but either way, there were two gangs that essentially ran all of the country. They would post up, when you'd walk down the street, in order to pass them, you'd have to pay 10 US dollars. In order to cross into certain areas, you'd have to pay. They would shake you down. They would have their guns. Nothing was free. And it became a way of life. Nobody really knew any other way. They accepted it. And the people here were not free and it was dangerous. They would come up to you, if they saw a tattoo, you know, on your body and had some questions, 
they would come up to you and all of a sudden start whistling, call you over. <laughs> you might get drug out in the woods and murdered. The murder rate was incredibly high. It was, it was as dangerous as it gets. Literally the most dangerous place in the world. And it was ran by the gays. And Bulecki came in. Sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. I apologize. But president, he came in and got it completely under control. And that is not an easy thing to do because who he's running against is going to go the opposite approach. And I'm sure he was getting paid off by the drug dealers. And yet Bulecki comes in and sticks to his guns and cleans this country up. It's an unbelievable accomplishment. It's amazing. I mean, right now, there's there's people out. It's 9 o'clock at night. It's lively. It's safe. Look, on this trip, I've been all over Central America. I was not expecting El Salvador to be a place that changed me. I really didn't. I wasn't sure. You know, I'm, tra I'm traveling from the southern tip to the northern tip. And what I'm going to walk away with after doing this is that El Salvador is a place that you need to travel to. An American needs to travel here. It It is as safe as it gets. I promise you, I'm feeling it. People are coming up to me telling me that they will protect me. El Salvador, in particular San Salvador, needs to be on people's travel list for 2023, 2024, moving forward. It has a lot of potential in 10, 15 years from now. I promise you, El Salvador will be a powerhouse in Central America. That's what I got. Travel and Tyler style. Subscribe to my channel. I got a lot of videos coming. I really do. Come along with me on this. It's going to be fun. I'm out.